Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. This is Richie. He's got a crazy FJ80 back here. Richie's on Instagram and YouTube as well. Jailbreak Overlander, Instagram and YouTube. Easy enough. I knew that, but I figured I should give you a chance nope. to talk. Oh, good. I'll anyway, good. he's got an 80. I just picked up an 80 as well for those that don't know. So that is my new my new rig. I still have the Tacoma. It's actually back there in the garage. But I've always wanted an 80 series. By happenstance, he was in town, said, hey, let's do a rig walk around. And I've been picking his brain for literally like three hours now, probably about 80s. And he's kind of been looking at mine, seeing what kind of condition it's in. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. So it's a good, good foundation. I mean, it's it's turnkey. It's good to go right now, but I'll, you know how I am. I'll do more to it. Indeed. So anyways, before it starts getting dark, figured we'd do a walk around of Richie's rig. He wheels this thing hard. He's from Boston, um, and he is out here in Colorado quite a bit, out in Telluride. Um, it's great trails. Ure, he's out in Moab quite a bit. So anyways, he beats this thing up. He's rebuilt it a ton of times. It's supercharged, it's on 37s, it's wild. We're gonna get into it. I'm gonna ask him some questions, just kinda have him walk me through the truck. So if you're into 80 series, check him out. If you're an 80 series, check me out too, because I'll have Imagine some stuff that. on my channel as well, because I copied him. But let's just get into it. Cool, so Richie, tell us a little bit about, I don't know, yourself, the channel, why you built the rig. Well, like I was telling you before we went live, I did, I've been doing this since before overlanding was overlanding. I had a Jeep, I took it out to Moab one time. I thought doing Metal Masher was a good idea. I thought I built it enough. Metal Masher crumbled that Jeep up and spit it out. I drove out of Moab with my tail between my legs. My ex at the time pointed out these Toyotas and said, everyone seems to have Land Cruisers. And I'm like, I'm not buying one of those Japanese piece of crap, blah, blah, blah. Two months later, I was driving to Alabama to pick this up. And when I got it, it was already fairly well built and I kind of went overboard with it. <laughs> but like I was bit. telling you, I, I live out of it six months out of the year and it does the job. And I do all the trails that I can find in the United States. And you live out of this thing for month, two months at a time. Yep, yep. Cool. I, hit the, I hit the supermarket, I load everything up in the back, I make meals on the road, etc. no fancy restaurants. All right, so let's, why don't you walk us around some of the exterior mods, armor, it's uh, kind of Rhino line, Line X, something like that, yep. and yeah, just everything. One of the questions was on the Rhino liner. This is an AI liner, a guy in California made this. This was applied with a roller six years ago, and it's finally time to redo it. The only downfall is I'm gonna have to get this sandblasted with walnut shells and then Rhino liner it again. So once you rhino liner it, you're basically stuck. But it's unbelievable. I mean, I drove this thing so bad that I scratched the alu cab yesterday, and this didn't take a scratch. It's it's like kryptonite. It's no joke. Hard stuff, yeah. And it adds a hundred pounds to your truck because it's hundred pounds, and you can't go back. And you can't go. So back. pretty big commitment. Yep. But if you want the most bomb-proof finish you can get, I guess I guess that's this. Yeah, I guess I guess um, on the front. Just like on your new truck, 4x4 Labs, Luke Porter made this bumper for me to fit this red winch that I just ordered and imported from Britain. These things are monsters. There's not too many in the United States right now. This has an air brake, so it runs off my compressor as well. And it's a 14,000 pound winch. Um, steady lights from Australia. I mounted these right up here. And of course, Expo. 2019 factor 55 i trashed the last one they just handed me a new one no problem you gotta love those guys so that's my front armor basically the grills made by landcruisergrills.com just gives much more airflow than the factory that's all and i try to keep heat down as much as possible cool and you got some <clears throat> hood vents going on and we got a lot going on under the hood which we'll get to a little bit later uh snorkel Yep, Safari snorkel like everyone else, and I actually use it, so. Metal Tech sliders, which now that I'm looking, look really similar to yours, except for the hoops, but yours just, yours are tricky, man. They don't look like what they are. Yeah, I got these ones that look like they're just steps. steps. But they're actually sliders. This is yes, box, they are. box steel. 
Got a little bit of rust going on, but. Rust happens. Yeah, rust happens. This was done by the previous owner. He had bar work done after he put this thing on its side at the Rubicon off of a four by labs bumper. So it's the same bumper as yours, except for the bar work and just different. I got a spare tire holder and three jerry cans in the back. Yeah, my guy has yep. similar bumper, different High lift jack mount. Oh, is so, that what that well, is? Well, you can put it right in so it locks in the ass end, oh, which is nice. Oh, nice. I was wondering what that hole yep. was. I wish they were on the front. They're not. It is what it is. Um, underneath is iron pig skid plates. And then the metal tech sliders cover my catalytic converters. I don't have to worry about my exhaust because I have a custom stainless exhaust that's up in the frame, so nothing can really damage it. So that's pretty much good to go. And I think that's it for armor underneath. Yeah, and then we got we got triple Jerry's back here. Two gas and a water looks like, or something. Yeah, two gas, fresh water. And my wee boost antenna that I ripped off first day in Colorado. It's on its side again. It's always like that. So that's where it ends up. Like these bumpers have these uh, pistons to assist opening and hold it open. It, it's a good setup, man. It's and nice. I mean, you've got the, I didn't even know you could do it, but you've got the winch underneath. He did a nice job because the bumper is still doing its job. It's still protecting it. Yeah, so mine over here has a rear winch actually tucked way under there tucked nicely yes under there but yeah same same basic bumper a couple different attachments and whatnot but i really like the bumper i mean it's tucked up in there first time you come off of a step in moab and that thing slams and nothing bad happens you'll love your bumper <laughs> they take a beat and it's amazing you got a little chuck back here is that hooked up to anything right now i got or? onboard air so i got a tank underneath the truck okay the tank is right there Nice. I got oh, a chuck yeah, I in the front, tank. chuck in the rear, and I, I got a compressor on board that runs, you already heard it running on its own. Okay. So I think that's it for bar work. Yeah, and let's, uh, before we get inside, let's check out these little goal wing. You got these on both both sides, huh? Yep. Yoda Tech? Well, the way I set up the back, I have to have these on the side so I can actually, because like this whole area, my onboard air, my uh, bubba rope straps, etc. I can still get to them without having to try to squeeze them out the side because this back setup right now is staying the way it's, it's not moving. That's nice. Oh, the lithium. I like this back too. There. I really like this. Yeah. Little things. Yeah. Little things. First aid on both sides. Nice. So and fire extinguishers on both sides because trucks do burn on trails. It's happened. And before we actually get in, we got a rack up top and then an alley cab as Expedition well. Expedition three, yep. And actually, let me climb up. You got some solar on top too, huh? I do. There's a Merlin solar panel on the very top. I just ripped off the wiring yesterday, but it still works. It's and dirty. That, that panel is Got to give it some cleaning. <laughs> I know, I know. I tried. I couldn't reach. That's the only downfall. You said you were 5'10", because I'm 5'10", and you're taller than I am. I can't reach up there. Uh, yeah, maybe this, maybe I'm growing. This morning, this was filthy. I yeah, he sent color. me a picture earlier, and it was it was just, you couldn't even tell what color it was. No, but it was brown. It was definitely brown, so. Okay, and then what? Wheels and tires? You want to talk Wheels about this? Wheels and tires, 37-inch Nitto mud grapplers. It's my second set in a year and a half, because I put 80,000 on the last one, because I'm always from Boston to Colorado, to Moab, to California, and back. I mean, he literally road trips this thing across the country every couple months. Yeah, I go every home, I work on it, and then I come back out, and yeah. I live out of it. So no fancy hotels, no Italian dinners and wine. And then you got, looks like some Dobinson Springs. Oh yeah, Dobinson Springs. And then some King Shocks. King Shocks, Reservoirs, King Bump Stops, Dobinson six inch heavies. So it actually lifts the truck about seven inches. I had a tough dog return to center, coil over, steering stabilizer. I swapped in the King. I'm going back to the tough dog because the tires and the coil over work together much better. Okay. You know what I mean? Good stuff. But it matched, so. Got some nice lights kind of throughout. Ditch yep. lights, got some in the back. Ridges, ridges on the side, steady lights in the front. I had the KC 50 inch light bar up top and I made, I made brackets so that it was ahead of my windshield, but it still flooded out my hood. So oh, yeah, it just man. wasn't worth it. Roof light bars, I don't know how I feel about them. They throw a lot of light, but 
all if it's dusty if it's yep. snowy if it's it, rainy then it's just like you're trying to look through no all that doubt, stuff no doubt these are on the front of the truck and these things are these shoot a mile almost a mile 800 and something meters and they're ridiculously bright yeah. ridiculously bright so i would say if you're going for lights i would prioritize something down low up front first and then if you still need more light after you've maxed that out then go for the roof but on my tacoma i have uh lights on the roof let's see not really gonna look at them but i got lights on the roof and in the front i hardly ever flip my roof ones on well like i said the only time i ever needed the 50 inch i turned it on and whatever was in the air illuminated i couldn't see anything it actually worked against me so but this doesn't affect my airflow at all because driving up to the top of your castle the mountain pass you have to drive up for an hour and a half <laughs> She yeah. didn't over. She got hot, but she didn't overheat. So these haven't affected because a lot of people were asking me that. Yeah, and I so think no. the distance here helps out. Yeah, air can get kind of you know swoops around here and gets in there. So yeah, and if you ever want to go this route, I know a guy. I'm sure he'll hook you up. I like it. It's they, he's got a bunch of different iterations. He's got them for your Tacoma too. I like more air too. It's the big thing. He also made it so you can actually put eight inch rounds in here instead of these. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. 80s are a whole new world for me. Yep, but you start you started out with the exact same platform I'm driving. And it's in my fair. opinion, I mean we're gonna get all sorts of crap for this because it's just how the 80 community is. You started with the best one, triple locked FCJ80. Best one, 97 triple locked. That's it. What what? 40th anniversary. To oh boo. man. To boo. Yep. Good stuff. Thank um, you. maybe pop the hood real quick. We'll all check right. out the supercharger and. What else we got in here? My dog goes crazy for the sound of hoods popping for really? some reason. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, let me hit that switch. Oh, a yeah. little bit of light. This is basically the same setup of your, as yours, except I've got a, a TRD supercharger under the hood. It helps up it a lot because the, the uh, straight six is a bomb proof engine. It just doesn't put out too much horsepower or torque and that's by design. This kind of rectifies that. So I did have dual batteries right here. I had another Odyssey Extreme sitting right here, 100 amp hour and it was a 90 pound battery. And it literally started tearing my fender well from all the wheeling because it was just so heavy. So I ended up getting rid of that battery completely. The Slee off-road kit to move the washer reservoir once the supercharger's in this runs the same through the snorkel this actually works that box over there is the lodar controller i had to wire in to control my winch i have a wireless controller for it when you order these from britain before they're available the drop down menu doesn't ask if you'd like a wireless remote it showed up with no way to control it at all and i called it i'm like hey guys um there's no winch cable they're like yeah you didn't order it and i said well i didn't know i had to so that was their answer so there's that. These are bomb proof engines. Absolutely bomb proof. For the most part. Big change with the Super supercharger? Yes. Yep. Yep. And you also have 488s, right? 488s and lower T case gears. So Oh you have T case as well. So when you Oh and four low. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't affect highway. I was I was scared to death of that. It doesn't yeah, affect it. I, I saw some of those, the the low range T case gears. Let's go inside. Let's take a peek in here. All right, go ahead. All, All right. right, so going inside, what are we looking at here? Um, I pulled out the I pulled out the factory seats. I put a set of Corbo leather sport seats in. I also pulled out the factory console and put in a Tuffy box, and then put in all those factory switches to control the lights in the center. I ended up getting a new uh, shifter knob because mine was beat. I got it from Toyota. It was still available for a, a, a princely sum. And then after trying my hand at sewing a bunch of times, I ended up having Texas I can't think of their name redo my steering wheel for me in leather. And then I went to a equipped one and got this cover for the top. Keeps the, keeps the dash from cracking. And I like I it. The, it's got some pockets up in there to yep. put some gear. And then, yeah, it protects the dash from it UV. Does. It does. I've got the uh, Magellan TRX-7, which is fair. I have the, uh, what's the new one? The Garmin Overlander is on its way to Colorado Springs Monday morning. Nice, So I'm yeah. going to be doing a video head-to-head. -head, I'm right? interested to hear about that. The, Gar the Magellan leaves you wanting. It'll stop working halfway. It's very, very, it's not user-friendly, and they know that. Um, the Ram mounts, 
front and rear view cameras. I got two cameras in the rear just because I can't see out the windows. And the usual patches up top. And when you own an 80, the one that says check your nuts, that's for real because there's four nuts that do come loose after wheeling extensively. So uh oh, I'll need to hear check about your this. Nuts. I'll tell you. I'll <laughs> tell you. So in the back, this is where my second battery went. I ended up going with a Red Arc BC DC 1225, which is right here. And that brings power from my main battery to that rely on 100 amp hour lithium battery right there. That's an LT battery, so it works in bad, really high temperatures, and it still charges in really low temperatures, because I live in Boston. And it's only what, like 25 pounds? It's 24 pounds compared to the Odyssey Extreme that was 90 plus pounds. And then, I've had no issues with it, but I'll tell you this. I just recently installed an Extreme Air Magnum, a monster compressor. That thing draws so much juice that it shuts that battery down. I had to run cables to my main battery. Wow. The lithium will run all day, no matter what. It just doesn't have the technology as of yet to take 80 amps on startup. So that was kind of lame. I didn't know that, you know, I had no idea. And the price is still up there, so I'm just that stupid. No kids, no wife, no life. That's what I do. <laughs> so. There's yeah, the you got a money, you got a lot of money into this thing for sure. Yeah. yeah, but I did all the work, so if it breaks, I can fix it for the yeah, most part. Yeah, it's good to know how to fix things when it breaks, because you're out oh, on the road. That's for well, that's the I, I never, I didn't even own, I didn't even own metric tools when I bought this. So, in the back, you know what? Let me open the rears for you. All right. So that's the inside, kind of Molly Alice of these opening gold wing doors. This is something I definitely want to add to mine, just the functionality. All right, let's get into the back here. And I don't know, let's go right to left maybe? Sure. So we, we got something down here. Yep, that's the extreme air. Everything is incredibly dusty from the Colorado Trail so far. But that's the extreme air magnum I just put in. The only thing I don't dig about it compared to the ARB is that it comes with all these extra controls over here. I have to have a 100 amp continuous duty relay and pressure sensors and all that stuff, things to fail. But I carry spares. This thing fills up a 37 inch tire freakishly fast. So far it's worked well. And like I said, my winch's air brake is dependent on air. So I have onboard air, tanks under the truck, etc. Um like I said, fire extinguishers and first aid on both sides because you never know. Because when you're out there by yourself or you're out with, there with others, you're still out there by yourself. So all my charging from the inverter goes to this strip, that charger right there. And then I got a blue C box on the side of this. And there's also a Busman 100 amp block under the hood. So I've got two separate fuse blocks running all the accessories because it's kind of a lot, but mostly lights and stuff such I just built this I mean I will I welded up a, a metal frame and then I made these with locking drawers I was just trying to get you know less weight so I used more metal it's lighter than the wooden version it keeps all my stuff in it I know where everything's at you know so when I pull over for the night I can cook some chow real quick keep everything in there this one not too organized but I still know where everything is and then the heavyweight part of this whole deal was the Dometic. I got this at Gearheads in Moab, and I was gonna make my own slider for it, but I ended up getting the Dometic. It was cheap enough, and it works perfect. So, locks in, good to go. Nothing moves around while I'm driving or driving sideways or whatever. Fluids, electrical, 12 volt, and then just recovery gears in this side pocket. Again, the compressor took up everything. The ARB used to sit right inside this rear quarter panel and I lost that, so that kind of sucks, but I'm working around it. It is what it is. Okay. And then this. This is the something I was just telling you, you gotta have. Yeah. The tailgate is completely wasted space and you have the 40th anniversary, so you've got carpet here. You're gonna wanna cook on it and do all sorts of other stuff. You don't wanna trash it. And you can store so much gear in here. I've got my hiking chair, bolt cutters, my Sven saw, a military shovel, DeWalt charger, and 
a high lift jack com collapsible full size shovel that we used two months ago to save ourselves. It's just a lot of gear. It doesn't move around and it would be wasted space. And a lot of guys are making really good versions of this. Oof, this is a good awesome. one. This is a good one. Wagon Gear was the first one to make it, I believe. But there's some that are all, you know, brushed aluminum, et cetera, stainless. So for reference, this is what is right. standard. And this is just nothing. There's nothing under this. It's just carpet, which is a waste of a tailgate, honestly. So we got all that storage just going to waste. So I'll need to add something like that. Indeed, for indeed. Sure. I'm sure Wagon Gear would be happy to help you out. So that's basically it. Lights in the back, cameras in the back, lights in the front, cameras in the front. Yeah, there's lots of little, I mean, there's so much added to this rig. There's all kinds of just little light hookups here and I learned this mounts when, there and this here and that there. I mean, right? you, got, you got tons of stuff in this thing. When we met up with Ronnie Dahl at the uh, Expo 2019, as brief as it was, because everyone was trying to pull him in a different direction, he mentioned these, the yellow lights don't attract bugs. So I got rid of my white ones and put the yellow ones in, and thus far they work. Hmm. You can still see everything fine, but it doesn't attract mosquitoes and moths and all sorts of other wacky Colorado flying things. A little better for your night vision too, I think. Indeed, indeed, without a doubt. We got high lift back here. Got yeah. some toesy shoes going on. Yep, huh? yep got to have those. And I have tons of Blue Ridge Overland gear. These hold my Tread Pros. And again, if I, I carry these things, I never use them. Two months ago, we needed them to get us off that mountain next to Nor next to Cheyenne Mountain. We were stuck and we were going over the side. My high lift jack base is in here. I keep all my clothes, dirty laundry, and trash in a separate bag in here. My tread pros are in here. They just make good gear. I've got like six different bags holding fluids and whatever else inside the truck. Keeps things from spilling and it supports an American made company. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Do you have any idea how much this thing weighs? It's about 7,000 pounds. 7,000? It's a lot of armor. That's it? Yeah. It was at I, my first time taking this cross country. My buddy owns Moab Motorsports, and he said, "Dude, take that truck right over there." We took it over to a construction place. They weighed it, and it said 7,500 pounds. And I'm like, "That's not accurate." He said, "Get out." The truck was 7,260. I weigh 240. It was dead nuts accurate. So I got rid of some things. I laid it up. I got it down to 7,000 pounds. Cool. I think that about wraps it up. This thing. I mean, we could, probably could have spent another hour right. digging into all of the little nitty gritty, but you guys don't have the attention span for that, probably. Some of you, I might not either. Me either. Anyway, Jailbreak Overlander on Instagram and YouTube. I'll link them down below. Uh, this is probably the most detailed thing out there of your rig, it though, is. huh? It is. Yeah, he does, I mean, he does some trail stuff. Like, what's... What I do on there is I show you how to rebuild superchargers, how to rebuild anything to do with vehicles. I'll show you what the trails look like for real, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'll show you when I set my truck on fire because I did something really stupid. Yeah. And then hopefully it'll keep you from setting your truck on fire from doing something really stupid. Yeah, so I mean, he's a hard, hard use. Hard, like he hits trails much harder than I do. So if anyone's gonna break something, it's gonna be Richie, so follow along. Especially if you're in the 80 series because he's, I mean, this is, this is one of the craziest ones I've ever seen anyway. You want to learn how to make fire in the snow and stuff like that. We've covered that as well. Cool. So I will link him down below. Sweet. Thanks for coming out. He's, he's all over the place all the time. He's like lives half his life on the road, I think. So this is a tested, trail tested and road tested Indeed. Indeed. rig. Indeed. I'm so glad to see that you got it, the identical model. <laughs> Yeah, it, the only we'll bad see. thing is now I have to ship an enormous box of stuff here because I couldn't carry it with me. I'd have to bring a trailer. <laughs> yeah, Richie says he's got all kinds of extra stuff. I do. Everyone that knows that me he's going to gift that. me. So, yep. rad stuff. Follow along with him. Follow along with me if you're in the '80s because yeah, mine will be taking shape. Indeed. Thanks for I your have time. No doubt. Anytime, brother. It's yeah. a pleasure all the time. Until next time, guys. Take care. We're out.